appreciate it. So uh, how's things with you at the moment? Uh, really good, you know. Um, kind of started packing my bags, basically. <laughs> Practicing the songs and, you know, excited to meet everybody in the band again. It's been a little, we had a little break since over the holidays and that. And excited to come back to, you know, Australia. It's the first time in five years, actually exactly five years since we've been down there. So, yeah, that's yeah. right. It was, uh, I guess it was for the uh, the Download Festival, uh, which was uh, obviously a great little run before obviously everything sort of shut down. But uh, what do you remember from that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember the Download Festival, of course. It was super cool to play there. It was our first festival date in Australia ever. And we've been going there since, I think, 2005. Um, to see you guys and play there, but this was like we've always done our own shows or whatever. Oh, we we played, we did a gigant tour with the Megadeth and stuff like that a bunch of years ago as well. Yeah, but uh, this was like the first like real big outdoor festival that we did in Australia. It was a really cool experience, enjoyed it. And then uh, we did a, we played the some of the other cities as well, uh, on our own club shows as well around that. So that was, yeah, that was the last time we were down there. So, I mean, yeah, it's been a while. Looking forward to coming back. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing you again. Um, it's been, uh, yeah, like you said, like a, a few years. Um, but obviously last year you had a new album that came out, you know, Deceivers. I uh, came out uh, around the August. Uh, so since that time, yeah. you know, how has the uh, the feedback and all that stuff been like so far? I mean, it's been really phenomenal, to be honest. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better response Um it's kind of interesting how it was released, you know, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things about this album, I think it makes it unique, you know, uh, you know, it conceived and, and, and recorded and produced during a very sort of strange time in history for everybody. And then um, that, of course, all the limitations that were set upon us and with travel restrictions and stuff like that made this album a bit more difficult to record and also there was no real deadline you know because uh which i'm used to having a good deadline strict deadlines to work towards but this time it was just kind of like you know we didn't really know what was going to happen if this this was all going to come back you know there's a lot of doomsday prophecies at the time yeah um and i think uh you know the way we released the song, the reaction to the songs is what your question was, right? I mean, we released uh, like singles. We started releasing singles. This was the idea from the record company to release a whole bunch of singles before the album came out, which is uh, a new way of doing it, certainly for myself and, and for our enemy. So we had like, when the album came out in August uh, last year, we already had, we'd already dropped six singles and videos, you know. So that was a, uh, and the reaction was really cool. It was really, I think it gave uh, the fans the opportunity to focus on each track for a few months and, and live with that, with these singles. And once we got out there and started playing shows again, I mean, we kicked, <clears throat> we started touring again in um, April uh, last year, after a two and a half year break off the road. Um, and you know we we were playing some you know new songs which were new singles the the ones we had out at the time like deceiver deceiver handshake with hell house of mirrors and so forth and and the reaction was really really strong and we continue doing that playing new so I think now in the set list in Europe and Latin America we were playing like uh, all six of these singles that we've had out which is uh, pretty nuts really but it's just a different it's a new world out there. And uh, people like the new songs, so why not? Yeah, definitely. Well, of course, this, you know, we 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 go into all, you know, we go into the new stuff as well, the older thing, the, the catalog and stuff like that as well. You know, it's a full show. It's not like a, you know, but still, it's very cool to be on the twenty seventh year of our as a band. You know, we're in our twenty seventh year, and our new songs are some of the most popular we've ever had. It's completely bizarre. I don't know what's going on in the music <laughs> business. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a crazy time now, I guess, with the music industry having so drastic changes over the last you know, decade or so. Um, and obviously, you know, you have sort of different ideas to sort of get around that, like, you, for example, like putting out more singles and stuff. Um, but mm. did that also kind of change the way you thought about, you know, music in general, as far as, like, how you want to present it to the audience? 
I guess that's a good question. I don't know how to answer it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I mean, for me, a live show is a live show. Uh, like you know, uh, in in uh, as far as playing them, I mean, we always play them as well as we can. You know, we, it's great to play the new tracks if people want to hear them. But you know, nowadays it seems like people really want to hear the new songs. Mm. I found that people that come to the shows expect to hear the songs, they, the videos, and the songs have been streaming. Uh, listening to a lot you know so we can't really ignore that that the band has uh, a newfound sort of just say i mean i don't know that we kind of got refreshed as a band and we just you know we just kind of like had this newfound uh appreciation for new songs you know which is great i mean it's what every band wants i guess um uh, we're not really relying on the old stuff to sort of pull us through uh the shows but uh you know, enjoying playing the new material, which is fun for us because it keeps it new and exciting for us. Um, and the fans are enjoying it as well. But then we play a lot of the old stuff as well. So it's a good, common, healthy combination. Uh, in Europe, you know, we have become like a, a bigger band um, over the last few years. So we've been sort of get moving up into bigger rooms and bigger, bigger halls. And uh, a lot of the last tour was a, an arena tour. So, you know, then you're playing in front of thousands of people and you're playing bigger stages and you have the, you have the, pre- not the pressure, but you, there's an expect, expectation to bring a production and pyrotechnics and, yeah. and all this kind of stuff, so, which we did, you know. So we had trucks and we had uh, tour buses with all, you know, and the uh, pyro uh, company and, you know, production stuff, all kinds of fun stuff. So, you know, it's, uh, but then of course, when we go to other territories, like we were just in, the last thing we did was in Latin America. And then it's back to playing bigger clubs and stuff like that, you know. So then it's more you downsize, you know. Then it's more about the music, just playing the songs and putting that energy across without all the the little theatrical uh, elements of the show, which is fine for me too. I mean, I love playing the smaller, the smaller room. So mm. it's what I'm, really mostly used to i'd say you know i mean that's kind of where i come from so i mean in australia i believe it's pretty uh you know it's a decent size but it's not like you know the huge huge rooms so i'm, I'm excited about playing the show i hope they're going to be intense you know i hope the fans reaction will be intense yeah definitely <laughs> but, uh, I, I've, I've personally seen you guys uh, many times over the years as well and uh, it's always a, a great energetic sort of show um, but sort of on okay, that cool. about you know playing different rooms, do you have a, a particular preference as to uh, what kind of environment or what kind of venue you prefer to play, like a festival, small club room, sort of arena, that kind of thing? I mean, we're very um, uh, we're very fortunate with our channel. You know, we kind of get to do a little bit of everything. You know, we play in the summertime in Europe. We're playing the huge festival stages, headlining slots on like Vakken and Summer Breeze and Hell. You know, all these kind of like really enormous festivals and also some smaller ones that are still pretty big with like 30,000, 25,000 people in front of the stage. And then of course, when you play Vakken and stuff like that, that's more like a hundred thousand people maybe. Um, so very fortunate to be able to you know, be in the position where we're playing those in great slots and um, with a big production and all that stuff, and pyro and all that. But then, you know, for me, and then we, like I said, we just did an arena tour in Europe last year but then we went to latin america and, st- and played clubs again and that's really what I, I kind of prefer i guess so you know the smaller the better for me because it's it's different when you're on stage i just like to feel the energy of the crowd a bit more yeah. but that's just my personal preference you know I, I know there are other opinions in the band about what's the most satisfying to play um but you know my personal preference is just a small sweaty club and just right the fans right in your face you know, but uh, that's just that's just me. <laughs> so I'm yeah, not speaking I, for our enemy. <laughs> I, I totally would understand why that would be the case because I mean I kind of agree that you know those there's something to be said about those more intimate kind of rooms and you kind of feel a bit a bit closer to to the band and obviously to the audience as well. I suppose. Hmm. Well, it's like you know, it's like with everything. It you know, it's like I don't know. Sometimes you the the, the difference the the the. the the space between us and the audience can be really quite vast at some of these festivals, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, they put the barriers so far back. There's this huge area in between us and, and the 
the people and we're putting we're throwing a lot of energy out there with the music you know we hit it hard from the beginning of the show and then it's i know the fe- i know the fans are do i can see the fans are doing all the crazy stuff but i can't feel them because they're too far away a little bit it doesn't really reach us in the same way you know what i mean yeah yeah so and then you know when you have the when you're more intimate you know you, it's this cycle of energy that just goes around and that keeps you just on fire you know throughout the whole show so there's no real moment where you just sort of step back and take it easy because you're totally in the zone the whole time and it can be difficult to maintain that sometimes on the bigger stages but you know what i'm not complaining because you know those bigger shows are killer to play as well you know and if we, if i only played small rooms small shows then of course i'd be dreaming about uh playing big shows right so <laughs> i think uh so you know it's really cool that we get to do a little bit of everything and i, I love just taking arch enemy around the world and into the deep into some of these countries and, and play in cities and and, and, and clubs so that the way they normally don't get live shows it's like we've been all over asia many times and southeast asia and a lot of shows in china we've been now we can't go there but we used to go deep into russia you know mm-hmm. even siberia and stuff like that and play a packed club you know and the fans are singing along i mean it's just on you know in brazil to play more regional cities or stuff like that i think that's really cool you know i think it's like a it's an adventure for us and it's it's super, and just so rewarding to see that you have fans everywhere really, pretty much you know this music is very uh it has it's we're not you know you know metal is not really mainstream but it still has a way of creeping into the fabric of society somehow yeah. that's cool great um, do you find that, you know, no matter where you are in the world, uh, as far as encountering metal fans, do you find that metal fans worldwide are pretty much the same as far as like how they respond to the music and things like that? I mean, there's a little flavor, every country, every, I mean, not every country, but every part of the world, I should say, and sometimes country to have their own sort of flavor to it, you know, and, um, even from city to city can vary. I remember like it used to be, uh, 20 years ago or more you know it used to be that like in japan like tokyo would be more reserved crowd but then in osaka there would be a lot wilder you know so then it can even different be different from city to city sometimes so the fan base is more more physical or more wild or louder or but you know i think if uh, uh, they're all great you know i don't think we don't have a bad audience anywhere it's just that they it's like food you know they, they taste a little bit different everywhere i guess you know yeah. I don't know. That was a, that was a bad. <laughs> not that, <laughs> that, was a, that was not a very good analogy. But uh, you know what I mean. Like everything, I get it has me, yeah. own, they have their own uh, own vibe. You know. Uh, what about in audiences? Do you find them to be a little bit more rowdier or maybe a little bit more conservative compared to some other countries or Australia? Yeah. No, no, not at all. Uh, I don't have that memory at all. Actually. I think the first time we came over was in 05, if I remember correctly, on the Doomsday Machine album. And we were really blown away then, I remember, by the audience reaction. We just came from Japan, which was uh, a Japan tour, I remember, and we flew directly to Japan. Uh, from Japan, sorry. Finished the Japan tour and I flew to uh, uh, Australia. And I remember it was like really exciting and uh, different to me to see that what, what it was like there you know it's another long flight it's so far away from europe you know so, yeah. uh, and uh yeah it was uh i remember just we just fell in love with australia at that time and uh, we enjoyed every time we've come back since uh, so yeah for us it's a huge deal to come back now after five years you know? Yeah, uh, well, looking forward to it. And uh, so uh, before I let you go, do you have any uh, last words for the Aussie fans before you uh, arrive in our country? Oh, I mean, thank you for the long time support. Thank you for, you know, uh, everything really. You know, the, 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 we've enjoyed every time we've been over there and hopefully this time now is going to be awesome as well. I mean, it's been five, five years, unbelievably. And uh, I hope it's not going to be another five years, but you never know. So you might as well get your ass over. <laughs> one of these shows <laughs> yeah you never know what's going to yeah. happen in, you, know, you never know what's going to happen in this world anymore it seems the things are not as predictable as they once were so we're we're going to be there and we're going to be in your town hopefully and um yeah 
looking forward to see you there. Thanks for the interview, yeah. by the way. Well, thanks for Good your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, we will see you in Australia very soon. Absolutely. Cheers. Appreciate it.